Hey, let's take a look at a little brain teaser here. Here we have a 2 inch by 2 inch by 1 inch N50 Gauss neodymium iron boron. On top of that is a N42 disc neodymium iron boron. Now there's no glue, no tape involved here. I can make this arrangement in any regards pertaining to gravity. Now the ring is just pure steel. Okay, now the black line is the dielectric inertial plane. You can see over here we have our polarity, quote unquote. And you think that this was hard to balance like this. Why? No, it's not. Look at that the knife thin edge of the steel there. It has an inner circumference thickness and an outer circumference thickness. And it is very thin, and yet it is extremely easy to balance. Gravity being down this way, extremely easy to balance this way. So why can, against the dielectric inertial plane, marked as the black line here, will the steel ring, it doesn't matter if it's a ring, a hollow or solid, it doesn't matter if both of these rings were uh, square, it wouldn't make any difference. Circular, square, hollow, not hollow, it doesn't make any difference. So why will the steel ring, while induced in the magnetic field, only sit perpendicular to the dielectric inertial plane? Magnetism is not driving a magnet, okay? Magnetism is definitionally radiation. Please, if you don't understand that, you're never going to understand anything. Ever. So, here we have our other magnets, our disc magnets. Why can it sit in parallel only along the dielectric inertial plane? If I actually were to grab a hold of the disc magnet and twist it, trying to make it perpendicular, I will encounter enormous torque. And if I do the same, I'm trying to take the steel ring and twist it in parallel, as exists the uh, disc magnet, I will encounter the same amount of torque. I will not be able to do it. So, no tape, no glue, no tricks here. Can you explain it? Do you understand what is going on here? Because if you don't, you will never understand magnetism. We know we have a south pole where magnets facing the north pole. That pretty much everybody understands, but they understand it by description only, not explanation. So what is going on here? Why does a steel disc, and remember, it's knife edge thin. Why does it only want to sit perpendicular to the dielectric inertial plane? So what's the difference between this? If they're both solid, it doesn't make any difference. I can do the same thing with a solid steel disc. It doesn't have to be a ring. It doesn't have to be a circle. Neither one of them do. Why will the dielectric inertial plane only sit perpendicular with the steel ring and only parallel inertial plane against inertial plane? What is the difference? I'm not going to give you the answer. If you can figure it out, then you have about a 70% grasp of what's going on in a magnet. So here's the brain teaser. Do you figure, can you figure out what's going on? What is going on? Just to prove that there's no glue here involved, let me grab the ring, the steel ring. Show you that there's no glue. There's nothing there. See? Nothing. Now let's wave our steel ring against the dielectric inertial plane. Watch what happens. Let me see if I can get my hand positioned here. You see how I have deflection? It will not sit in parallel with the dielectric inertial plane. And if I put it on the magnet and I try to twist it in parallel, I encounter great torque. And the same thing with our disc magnet. Great torque and trying to make it perpendicular to the dielectric inertial plane. But this is a neodymium magnet. Doesn't matter if it's a ferrous magnet or neodymium, it doesn't make any difference. So, what happens when I do this? I get the opposite effect. And dragging it along dielectric along dielectric against dielectric. You think, well, I've seen this before. No, you probably haven't. You've seen it. I'm sure you've heard it described. But what is it? Can you explain it? If you can't explain it, then you don't understand anything. College is where you get descriptions. Explanations only come from wisdom. And the idiots in academia will only teach you how to read, memorize, recite, memorize, pass tests. They will not teach you how to understand anything. So what's going on here? How can I easily balance this? And this is razor edge thin too. It's not 
it is easy to balance but not super super easy because it's got a knife edge on it I just do it to prove to you that I'm not this is not a trick there we go no trick remember it's got a knife edge thin edge on it so obviously that's hard to do magnet or otherwise but why am I able to do that against gravity what is going on there if you understand it fine if you don't well Anyway, discuss that more things in the third edition of Uncovering the Secrets of Magnetism. Remember, magnetism is not driving magnetism, okay? What does that mean? That means people see the buzzing of flies and they blame it on horse poop. Well, horse poop is not the cause of flies. It's the resultant posterior causative factor, but what becomes before that? We have our horse. What's pulling the cart and carriage and the people in the cart and the carriage? It's certainly not the cart and the carriage itself, so a magnet is not a magnet. Well, what does that mean? That sounds insane. Well, what does that mean? What is along this black line? It's concentrated at, not located at. Just like water displacement and fluid dynamics, concentrated at. I can take this magnet and slice it a thousand times this way against its polarity. I will end up with the same black line against with with every slice. Oh, that seems to start to make sense. You know, it's kind of coming together. Concentrated at, forced at, the incommensurate nature of magnetodielectricity in this conjugate system which has been electrified from cap banks to discharging coils increased dielectric capacitance therefore that gives you a hint as to what's going on between the steel ring which sits perpendicular to that electric inertial plane and the neodymium magnet which sits in parallel to it again no answer given let's see if you can figure it out thanks for watching catch you later